Hey there folks and welcome back for another video. I'm your host CDB or you can call me Chris and today we're going to use a sample of the Murphy and McNeil. If you can see it there, sorry about the light. This is Nantahala. Now, if that pronunciation is wrong, I looked it up, uh, put it in Google Translator and that's the way that it said it. Uh, initially I thought it would be Nantahala, but Google, Google says uh, Nantahala. So, you know, whatever the case may be, this is a Murphy and McNeil soap. It is their uh, Kodiak base, which has, uh, I believe, bare tallow. Uh, let me go ahead and put the ingredients up there for you so you can get a look. This is quite an expensive soap due to the exotic nature of bare tallow, I presume. Um, <clears throat> this is $19.99 for three ounces or $6.66 per ounce. Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you, honey. Well, a, lot of, a lot of you <laughs> viewers are younger. You might not remember Sanford, but... Woo! Expensive. Now, that said, a couple of caveats. One, in the United States, Murphy McNeil offers uh, free shipping, so almost no one does that. Two, uh, well, let me caveat. Almost no one does that unless you order $45, $60. So Murphy McNeil, just free shipping. Excellent. So you have to factor that into cost. And also, they give to charity. It says Nature uh, Conservancy uh, Charity. So you know, if that makes you happy, that also factors into the cost. But in any, in any event, this is not a budget-friendly soap. This is a little more on the expensive side. Again, I'm using a sample. I used a little under half the sample, so I'll be passing this along to someone else. The scent to me, it reminds me of uh, a little bit. Sorry for knocking the camera out of place there. Uh, reminds me a little bit of Sterling Sandpiper, which is a terrific scent. Uh, there's some citrus in it. It's a little bit floral. Now, I would not call it heavily floral. It's nice and sweet, um, but not too sweet. It's really a, a nice scent, uh, I think. And we're going to be using the leaf, which is our usual suspect for uh, head shaving. Uh, Persona red blades. Let's go ahead and wet the dome so we can get right into it. The brush is going to be the Simpson Trafalgar. Um, and we'll see how we feel about this. We've used it once so far. And I will say it is better than any Simpson synthetic I've used to date. Whether I really like, a, like it a lot or not, I don't know yet. Um, but I will say that I find it better than the Chubby 2, better than, you know, the Classic, better than other syn uh, synthetics that I have tried from Simpson in the past. So, you know... That that gives me hope, <laughs> and, and it just felt better better to me uh, overall. Um, if you haven't seen my video on Murphy McNeil customer service, um, please watch that video. Uh, really, really responsive company, artisan, uh, and so you know they made a customer of me, and I ordered some more stuff um, because of it. So let's see how this. Kodiak base goes. I like their Aeon. I think it's called Aeon or something like that base. And uh, to be honest, the Aeon left me wanting for nothing. So I'm sure this is going to be quite good as well. Um, again, this particular Simpson brush, I think is considerably, it, 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 it splays. Uh, you still have to put down some effort. So for those of you who like something that, you know, you pushes back on you a little bit, you might like this one. If you're looking for a uh, synthetic that, again, pushes back a little bit, you know, this one might do it for you. And it's uh, pretty inexpensive, usually between, what did I say, $26 and $30, somewhere thereabouts. Um, it's a 26 millimeter knot. And uh, again, I have uh, I find it better than a lot of the Simpson, well, better than every Simpson synthetic I've tried to date. It does have a tendency to push the lather down because in order to splay it, you have to push and then it pushes the lather up towards the handle. But they really intend for these to be painting brushes, but we all know that everybody splays their brushes, you know. Now, I do a lot of painting as well, but I also splay it to get that uh, initial scrub. Simpson uses their own, I think it's called uh, Sovereign Fiber. Uh, and it feels pretty good. You know, it's soft. It's not as soft as some. Um, like, I much more prefer the $20 um, AP Shape Co. 
what I call the white wizard with the cashmere, much prefer, or the Sinbad, either one. I much, much, much prefer those fibers and those brushes. They just, for me, perform a lot better. But this one gives me hope that Simpson is headed in the right direction. At least it plays, you know, without tremendous effort. And I think some people will actually like it because, uh, because of the fact that, you know, it feels like it has a little scrub to it. So I think some people are going to like it. Again, using our leaf. Now, one thing I want to mention about the leaf. The leaf may feel a little like a cart because it has the pivot and because you put multiple half DE blades in it, but do not confuse it for a cart. It is not a cart. And if you get cavalier with it, it will let you know because I've cut myself with it, uh, you know, on that Friday night Instagram video. Now that, you know, obviously I wasn't in best shape for, shave form for that particular video, but keep in mind, this is still using three sharp DE blades and every single DE blade on the market is sharp. Make no mistake about it. Everybody panics over the feather being so sharp and all that. And it is, but every blade will cut you if you don't respect it. Uh, DE blades. Um, carts are generally a little more forgiving. And I have a bump on the back of my, towards the back of my head. I'm trying to be very ginger around so I don't open it up. But this razor feels comfortable. It feels quite nice. It feels a lot like a cart. But if you get sloppy with it, it will cut you because it's, again, I got three um, Persona red blades in here and they're sharp. And if you do something wrong, <laughs> you know, it will cut you. Now, it's not one to be afraid of. It's like any DE razor, honestly. Um, if you sleep, if you get sloppy, it will cut you. It is no more risky than any other DE, but it is not a cart. That's really what I'm trying to emphasize. So keep that in mind. It is a very nice head shaver. It is my preferred head shaver and I have replaced my carts with this. I never liked regular DE razors on my head. They don't feel good to me. Um, you're constantly having to change your angle and the pivot lends itself to very good head shaving, I find, that's just me. It feels very comfortable. It does a very good job. And uh, I just love it. And for head shaving, I don't mind that it has a long handle. Now, could I get away with a little less handle? Yeah. If they took it down another inch and a half or so, I would probably like that. But I'm still finding it to be an outstanding head shaver. And as I've mentioned so many times before, you know, I like to give credit where credit is due. I saw... Chris Madden, or Maiden, I should say. I keep calling him Madden, but his name's Maiden. From another cut above, talking about how much he loved this for head shaving. And it never occurred to me to try it for head shaving. And then once I did, I was like, oh, he's on to something there. And so uh, now it has become also my favorite head shaver. Now, as to the soap. Really nice, slick, even though I've removed all the lather. It is plenty slick enough. The scent strength on it is right at medium for me. It's got a really pleasant citrus, slightly floral um, scent to it. It's, it is absolutely not a dead ringer for Sterling Sandpiper, but it's sort of reminiscent of that scent. So if you like this that scent, you might like this one. It is a good scent, in my opinion. Um, I don't know, honestly. I'm undecided on whether this scent is one that that I would buy, but I, I like it. I'm not sure that I love it, but uh, it is a, definitely a nice scent. Um, I prefer the Sandpiper to this scent, but this is a really nice scent, I will say. So I think I think many people would enjoy this scent because I think it uh, it just smells good. You know, it is not necessarily. Uh, right up my alley, which is strong citrus or cologne type scent, but it's a really nice, pleasant combination of citrus and a little bit, bit of floral, maybe even some woody elements that tone it down a little bit, I think. I'm not sure because I don't have the the notes in front of me. I'm just going off what I smell. And keep in mind that what I pick up in a scent may not be what you pick up. I know a lot of times 
Um, people say, that soap doesn't smell like that. Well, yes, it does to the person who smells it. Even the artisans who um, scent a soap and they make their own scent and they know exactly what's in it, you may not perceive that scent the way they intend. Your senses may not be, you know, they, we're not all the same. That's for the same reason we don't all like the same food. Some things taste better than others. Some things also smells better than others. That's why I tend not to like earthy scents. This one is not earthy. So this is a this is a good scent um, that I enjoy. Whether I would pay $6.66 for it, again, take off some for shipping. Um, actually, if you, if you deducted the shipping, because the minimum shipping cost would be if you bought this soap, it would probably be six, seven bucks. Cause, so if you take that out of it, it becomes an affordable soap. Um, that's one thing to consider about Murphy and McNeil. If you if you knock that shipping off and, and calculate that in the, uh, the factor in, it makes it far more affordable. Um, they have so many, uh, I think, based on reading their soaps, Murphy and McNeil, great sense. Like I know they have... Uh, several that I want and I have ordered two more so more are coming and I and I'm telling you they've made a customer out of me with their excellent excellent above and beyond customer service that's what I like about artisans is a lot of them are really in tune with their customers and they are very eager to help and to try to make things right when something doesn't go right and I think uh DK had commented on my video about their customer service that he also had a story to tell about a, a customer service experience that he had with them, which I'm assuming was very positive. And so you really cannot complain with that. I mean, when somebody's really going, going out of their way to, let's just go this way with it. Um, try something a little bit different. I normally don't go this way. When someone is going out of their way to please their customers, and, and uh, you know, there's sort of a, a fine line there because we are very demanding, you know, wet shavers. So there's no way that an artisan can please everyone. But when something is clearly wrong and they go above and beyond to correct it, that, that makes for a winning artisan in my book. So they have definitely impressed me. And uh, I really can't say enough good things about them you know, in my limited experience with them. Because I'll tell you this, not every artisan has their same commitment to customer service. Some artisans, you buy from them and, you know, I'm sure they're grateful. Um, but, you know, if you have a problem, unless you reach out to them, and, you know, many of them are busy, so they don't have time to watch every video or read every post but the way I look at this, quite honestly, is it's sort of a two-way street. Because as I've said in other videos, artisans enjoy unprecedented advertisement. Now, we're not advertising for them directly, but every time we show one of these soaps, it's tantamount to an advertisement, good or bad. And so they enjoy unprecedented, in my view, advertisement from their user base and the shave of the day posts. And those are all advertisements. And so many people learn about things from those. That's how I learned about Murphy and McNeil. It wasn't a, obviously a commercial on TV or a Google ad, uh, or an ad on Facebook. It was someone else's posting about it. So that's how we learn uh, the forms, you know, and all those sort of things. That's how we learn about these products. So they benefit from what we do, make no mistake about it. And I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm saying all of us in this community who are displaying their products are doing them a solid. In turn, a lot of them are very responsive because of it, because they do appreciate it. Murphy and McNeil appreciate it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Some just keep on making their soaps and, you know, uh, they just go on about their business and they're not particularly active in terms of seeking out content and watching how their product is being used. Some are. Some are resting on their laurels, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but uh, whenever I run into a company like this, I'm super happy 
to use it. And also, you know, there are lots of great ones that do similar things. And I'm, I can't name them all, but, you know, I know Peter Charkalis, for example, from A&E watches how his product is used. Uh, I know Sterling, you know, is active. Even Joe from Razor Rock is always watching uh, social media and, and how his products are being um, used. And, and sometimes it's good and bad because sometimes, sometimes they're active in the community and People don't like what they have to say, you know, but uh, I appreciate those who take an interest and they're watching the content and when they see a, when they see someone using it or review and they, uh, if things don't go right, they reach out, you know, they're, they care. And that to me is a really excellent sign. And Murphy, Murphy and McNeil absolutely pay attention because I didn't ask him anything on that label issue. They just said, hey, we're on it. And so that's a big thumbs up. And so, and this soap has performed very well. Honestly, I don't discern a, a tremendous difference between this formula and the Aeon. Yes, I'm sure if I didn't put an aftershave on down the road, it would probably have a better post and all, but the Aeon base was great. This Kodiak base is great. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me rinse off. We'll come back and get into the post. Stay tuned. All right, here we are back with our Lancaster Razor Works black sheep towel, which is fantastic. Very nice. That was a really enjoyable head shave. Um, really, really enjoyable. Smooth, no cuts, creepers, weepers, nicks, irritation, bubbles, troubles. Outstanding. That's what I like. Okay talk a little bit about, well, let's slap some witch hazel on first. Now, one of the things I want to mention is you'll see videos where people are talking about the post. The moment that I started applying witch hazel, aftershave, and bombs, you can forget evaluating a shaving soap post, in my opinion. Because once you're putting these astringent type things on your skin, it's going to strip a lot of that, whatever was left on your skin, off. So if you're using any sort of astringents, alcohol-based aftershaves, balms, you've now polluted the whole thing. So I noticed that Jack from the virtual groom room, when he's going to evaluate a post, he doesn't put anything on his face, post-shave. That's the best way to do it. If you're going to evaluate a post-shave, don't put anything on your face after the shave. Don't shower. Let it set in a couple hours, see how it goes. That's how you evaluate. I don't do that because I am always using post products. So for me, I don't get a great value out of post shave because I always use post shave products. And if you're a shaver that also use post shave products, does it really matter that much? Maybe it does. To me, it does not because, you know, the effects are not going to be that great as far as I'm concerned. The Leaf Razor with Persona Reds. Excellent ride today. Very, very nice. The Simpson Trafalgar um, T3 26 millimeter. The best Simpson synthetic to date, as far as I'm concerned, pretty affordable at around 30 bucks. Um, still, you do have to push down. Still, some of the lather is going to go up towards the handle. Is it is it is? Do I like it as much as my recent AP Shape Co. White Wizard and Hulk? Absolutely not. But is it pretty decent? Yes. So I'd say they're on the right track. Not 100% there, but they're getting there, and that's good news. Let's close it out today with our Sterling Sandpiper, which to me sm smells similar to the to the soap. Not Dead Ringer, but similar. Pretty nice, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Whew. Sandpiper, Whew. I love that. Okay, final thoughts on the uh, Murphy and McNeil Nantahela, Nantahela, or at least that's what Google says. Really good quality uh, soap, um, pricey. But really good, really nice, pleasant scent in the mid-strength. Uh, mid no problems whatsoever with lather quality. Quite good. Thumbs up for me. Um, is the scent a winner? I don't know if I would buy it at its price, but I do like the scent. It is nice and pleasant. I think many people will enjoy it. It's probably not a top scent for me, but I did like it. And uh, I'm going to hold on to this. So sometime when I send something to another shaver, I'll send them the rest of this sample and they'll be able to try that. So you folks who get samples, you don't always have to use the whole sample. That's one of the things I recommend. Use half of it. And next time you send a package to someone, drop it in there. I mean, just spread the love. 
Thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I want to remind you, it's your shave, do it your way, and of course, God bless.